Well, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the new studio. Today, I want to talk to you about the testing that we did of the acoustic properties in here. REW testing, it's free download. It's something that you can do on your own. Specifically, I want to talk about waterfall charts, what they mean, why we care, and what you can do to look at a waterfall chart of your room to help you understand how you can get better mixes. Let's get to it. So let's take a closer look at what a waterfall test looks like. I just went to Google and typed in REW waterfall and it shows me a bunch of charts from a bunch of different people's rooms and we're going to look specifically at three of them. Now here's an interesting one that I found with, which had some labeling already done on it talking about the difference between a much faster decay uh, or a slower decay. And what you're seeing first off when you look at this is all the bass is over here on the left hand side and all your treble is over here. Generally these things run from about 20 hertz down in your bass region all the way up to 20k. That's the range of human hearing. And as it moves towards you, this graph, it's showing you how much sound is left over kind of echoing in the room at different frequencies. And it's important to note that these uh, frequencies are not telling you how accurate your speakers are. They're showing you where the echoes are between bass and treble. So don't expect the top line of this chart to be nice and flat. We're going to take a closer look at the left-hand side of this, which is typically where you're going to see a some more problems down in the low low frequencies and as you can see here there's frequencies labeled around 30 hertz uh, 40 hertz 50 hertz and these frequencies do not decay quickly i believe this chart was set up for 300 milliseconds of range most times charts are set up for about 400 milliseconds of range to show you what's happening and what this is telling you is the echo down in the low, low frequencies, 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz, especially, especially here between 40 and 50 hertz, even after 300 milliseconds of time, that, those echoes have not died out yet. They're still ringing around in the room. And when you talk about 300 milliseconds, you're talking about this much time. That's roughly 300 milliseconds, meaning every time a kick hits, it's still ringing by the time the next kick comes in. That's where you're going to run into some problems with your mixes. Now, here's what I consider to be a very, very good chart. This chart shows that all across the low frequencies, and they're only looking at uh, from 30 hertz up to 200 hertz because they're really concentrating on where in the bass range they might have an, a, an echoing note here and look how quick all these things die out they are set up at what i consider proper a 400 millisecond range to see what frequencies are lingering and how quickly they are dying out and every one of these frequencies has gone dead before it hits 400 milliseconds this is a really really good chart if you see everything has waterfalled everything has hit bottom long before that 400 millisecond time frame has run out, you're looking at a good chart. And this chart actually comes from a manufacturer of acoustic treatment panels. And so, of course, they're showing their best of the best. Now, here's a more typical chart for a home recording studio. And again, they're doing the same thing. Um, they have it narrowed to a 300 millisecond window, which really you should... Give it the 400 milliseconds so you can really see what's going on. And again, they're only looking at the lowest, lowest bass frequencies from 10 hertz up to 200 hertz. This is all bass stuff. And you can see a big problem here, especially here around 30 hertz, especially here around 60 hertz. 
there's an, a node there. There's an echo in the room on those, specifically those two frequencies. And even after 300 milliseconds, they have not died out. As a matter of fact, they're still going really strong. If this chart was extended to 400 or 800 or even a full second of time, there's a good chance that we would still see these frequencies lingering around. Now, here's the chart for my room. I could have done some trimming to kind of make it fit the window a, a little bit more like those other charts that you saw, but this is my full spectrum from zero hertz which you can't hear, uh, all the way up to 20K. So I don't even start producing bass with the monitors that I have in here uh, until we get up around 40 or 50 hertz. Uh, you can see I've got nothing at 20, uh, nothing at 30, really. Um, but you can get an indication that my bass range, which pretty much runs to about here, I'd say, this is over a 400 millisecond decay time, and I have nothing even remotely approaching it. For fun, what I did is I did trim this chart down to a 200 millisecond decay time just to see, and I had nothing exceeding 200 milliseconds. That's pretty stellar, and I'm not trying to be a show-off and say, look how good my waterfall is, but I want you to see what it would look like if these frequencies were not lingering around and this is a good chart to show that with and I want to share with you exactly how I did it. This my friends is 20 bales of rock wool insulation and it's generally all exposed just kind of framed up into the walls. If you watch this channel please go back and watch the building of the studio, which is a, a quick four minute presentation. But that's what 20 bales of rock wool looks like. And if you're thinking to yourself, 20 bales of rock wool, well, keep in mind this room is roughly 20 by 23. It's a little over 400 square feet. Plus I double rock wool the ceiling in a, in, in a basement that's not hard because the rafters are, are two by eights. You can get two layers up in the entire ceiling. The entire back wall behind me, the orange wall back here, that's also two by eights. And so it was double thick with rock wool. Uh, all the other walls in here are two by four, with the exception of directly behind my desk where my subwoofer is, down by my feet. Those are also two by eights, double stuffed with rock wall, and it's actually recessed four inches additionally beyond the surface of the, the the actual front wall of the studio. Now what's all this going to cost me to add 20 bales of rock wool? Well, if you're buying in quantity you can get a little bit of a discount. In general, uh, one bale of rock wool is going to run you about uh, $58 I think. Uh, I was able to buy 20 bales. I was able to get them for about 50 bucks a piece. And I was able to get free delivery from Lowe's because I was spending that amount of money. Uh, and not just that, but like the lumber and everything. One of the questions people have had when I was building the studio was, what did you spend? Let me start you with this number. 20 bales of rock wool, $1,000. Do you need 20 bales? Well, if you want your chart to look like my chart, that's one way to approach it. Is it overkill? It may have been overkill. I did build a lot of reflective surfaces over the top of those rock wool framed walls so that it does still have an element of a live room. And as a matter of fact, the entire backside of this room even has hard ceilings in it, even though it's a double rock wool above that. When you're over there and you play an acoustic guitar or you sing, it's very lively sounding in there. When you're on this side of the room, all of the ceiling panels are just canvas and directly behind it is two layers of rock wool. This is the dark side of the room. That's the light side of the room. It's just like Star Wars, but it's in my studio. One last thing I want to cover with you guys is the normal chart, the standard chart, which is your frequency response chart for what do your monitors actually sound like in your room. It's not as effective, really, as looking at the waterfall test. 
because the waterfall test, if you have frequencies that are lingering around for 500 milliseconds or 1,000 milliseconds, they're going to impact this frequency response chart. And it doesn't matter how good a monitors you buy, you know, thousands of dollars on like good Genelex or something like that. And your frequency response chart, this chart, is going to really be messed up by all those lingering frequencies. You really want to address your waterfall chart first. What this is showing me is this, and I'll get me out of the way. It's every frequency from 20 hertz all the way over to 20k, which is treble. Down here is my bass. And around 20 hertz, and we, we saw this, 20 hertz down to 30 hertz, my speakers are not, even with a subwoofer, they're really not reproducing anything. They start coming into play about 40 hertz, which that's the chest thumping sound that you will find. By the time we get up to 60 hertz, though, which is still in that chest thumpy area, I've pretty much hit where I want to be. And from there over, what I'm looking at is, is it basically flat? Does it have anything that's like a wild jump up or jump down at any frequencies? And you can see that I do have a couple little issues in here. Um, I have a little bit of scoop out on around 750 hertz. And this is comparing both my monitor sets. The green one, uh, this is Kali LP8s in green, and the blue one, this is Yamaha HS5s with a subwoofer. And when you can see that they're doing different things, I think a lot of that is, you can attribute that to, well, these are two different brands of speakers. They're both really considered very flat overall. When you see that they're doing the exact same thing, like right here, they both kind of scoop out. Uh, or right here, they both kind of have a little bit of a boost. You can attribute that to the build of the room. And I know that the room that I built here, uh, with the consultation of Ethan Weiner, who, Ethan Weiner you should reach out to if you're going to do anything like this. The best money that you can spend in the studio isn't really buying $1,000 worth of rock wool and just kind of haphazardly placing it. It's the consultation with a real acoustician who can look at your drawing that you made on a piece of paper, or in our case, and you can check the videos that we made on this, 3D renderings of the studio ahead of time. And he went over all that with a fine-tooth comb and said, look, move this wall, change this to here. His consultation fee is like 200 bucks. Pay it, because you can save that in materials that help you build the studio better rather than wasting money on materials that might just actually be hurting you. That's the smart way to do it, guys. He did the consultation on this entire studio build, for which I am very thankful that he took the time to help me out. And this is a very, very flat frequency response. I'm very happy with it. Let me leave you with this. If you get the opportunity to design a room from, in this case, it was just cement walls of a basement and cement floors, and you can hammer a nail or put up some framing, don't necessarily just cover your walls with sheetrock. The trick that I used was fill everything with rock wool and then just basically hang nice canvas over it, staple it in. And then if you want to put a little bit of paneling below ear level, you can do this. You could probably get these results for $1,000. $1,000, we could easily be spending that on a good pair of monitors or monitors in a sub and not get results like this because it's the room, guys. These LP8s that I'm running here absolutely are like 400 bucks a pair and their charts as good as the Yamaha's because the room is good. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. We got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. Oh, I'm glad to see we got live streaming put back together again uh, after the fiasco last night, trying to do the studio tour. Um, you do have a little one minute studio tour 
uh, guys, all the videos that went up to this point of um, the concept, the 3D design uh, using Room Sketcher, the consultation that we had with Ethan Weiner, the build part, we, we, we made a video that does the entire build in four minutes. It's hysterical to watch. Um, the amount, it was six weeks of work in four minutes. Uh, it flies right by. Uh, then the quick studio tour. Uh, and now testing. Uh, we're, we launch tomorrow. Uh, the, the studio actually launches tomorrow. So this is all like kind of hastily done at the last minute. You may have seen some of the earlier REW tests before we did uh, the fine tuning in here. Uh, if you guys have any questions about how did we do the fine tuning from the, like the early charts, which were great, up to these new charts, which are even better, um, I would love to answer those questions. Hit me up in the comments if you have any comments that you would like to make. Uh, you want to point out something that uh, would be interesting maybe for other people watching the video to see, hey, you know, what can they do um, that you learned that might help benefit them? I'd super appreciate it. Uh, down in the uh, link below, um, I'll link Ethan Weiner, a great acoustician. If you're going to be doing any kind of a, you know, a bedroom or uh, your attic or your garage or you're down in your basement or something like that, literally, before you spend any money, talk to him. He will save you that amount of money in materials because you'll buy properly and you'll put it in the right spot. I had uh, so much fun putting this together. It looks like it actually live streamed, which we were not able to do last night. So things are getting fixed, which is not bad. The studio launches tomorrow. I still got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it.